For two and a half centuries, through the reign of ten sultans, the empire's growth had been fueled by the spoils of war. Now there was nothing left to conquer. It simply wasn't possible to keep on conquering. There had to be a change. They were up against borders in Europe and they were up against borders with Iran. They were going to waste their budget on unnecessary wars. Constant campaigning had honed the Ottoman war machine into an invincible force. Now idle, it declined rapidly, failing to modernize either its tactics or technology. Sultans no longer led their armies in battle. The Sultan is no longer the warrior king on horseback leading his troops on the frontier, as they were in the reign of Suleiman. The Sultan basically stays in Istanbul and is the figurehead in a system that really is being run and controlled by others. And that system, the military and civil institutions that were so effective in building the empire, proved incapable of maintaining it. By the late 16th century, the Ottoman Empire, unable to meet the challenge of change, entered a centuries-long period of slow decline. One by one, its institutions failed. Among the first, the Ottoman tradition of dynastic succession. Fratricide may have been brutal, but it had served the Ottomans well, providing an unbroken string of 10 powerful sultans. One of the things that contested succession did, crude and barbaric as it seems to us, is it tended to eliminate weak candidates to rulership. In 1595, the most violent dynastic killings in the history of the empire put an end to fratricide. Mehmet III came to power after murdering 19 young princes. The wails and cries of the people of the city were doubled and tripled on this funeral. They simply could not bear to see this procession of coffins coming out of the palace. And I think that was one of the pressures that persuaded the dynasty to stop doing fratricide. The sultans who followed Suleiman were, with rare exception, weak and inexperienced. Many were minors under the influence of the Valid Sultan or Queen Mother and the palace fell victim to intrigue and infighting. The empire that had thrived for centuries with strong sultans and dominant armies now had neither. By the late 18th century, the Ottoman army, the war machine that had outmanned, outgunned, and outmaneuvered all its enemies, was in ruins. It was defeated by Russia's Catherine the Great in the Crimea in 1774, and was unable to stop Napoleon's invasion of Egypt in 1798. The mighty Janissaries, once the tip of the sword of the Ottoman army and the training ground for the viziers and advisors who managed the empire had degenerated into a corrupt and lawless band of rebels. They were no longer effective on the battlefield and they were out of control. In 1826, Sultan Mahmud II, one of the few competent sultans to rule after Suleiman, decided to act. He trained 10,000 new troops loyal to him and attacked the Janissaries. The Janissary era was over. In a bloody show of force, Sultan Mahmud wiped out what was left of one of history's most celebrated fighting forces. The sophisticated civilian institutions that the Ottomans had developed over centuries, tax collection systems, administrators, a complex and fair legal system, were also failing. The empire's growth had been fueled by conquest and the taxes that new territories generated. Without growth and new revenues, corruption set in. Provincial officials began selling judgeships. Merit promotion gave way to bribery and nepotism. The infrastructure collapsed. The Ottomans also failed to develop a modern economy to replace their shrinking tax base. And they faced new competition. Over time, European powers developed new sea trade routes that cut the Ottomans out of the lucrative Asian silk and spice trades. The once glorious Ottoman Empire was becoming known as the sick man of Europe. 